Hey y'all, and welcome to another video. This week should be short and sweet. This week we're just going to go over basically one of the studies or what I've, one of the things that I've been studying so far fitness-wise. Um, this is my journal. This is one of my journals. I go through journals pretty quickly. Um, I'm not a journaler, but it's easy. Like, I don't write down my feelings, but I'm, I'm, it's easier for me to keep track of, like, facts and stuff when uh, and data and stuff and compare them when it's all written in kind of one area so i have multiple ones but this is the one i'm currently on right now and so i'm just gonna randomly pick a page break down each bullet point what it means and how it may apply it may or may not apply to you so it shouldn't be long a super long video though i do say that sometimes and i end up having to cut parts out because the longer i talk like it'll be 30 minutes and it's really supposed to be 10. so Here's hoping I get straight to the point, explain what I'm trying to say, explain what I mean, and shouldn't be longer than 15 minutes, which I know is kind of long for some of you guys, but if you sit through it all, gold sticker, you're a champ. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so I picked I picked this study randomly already. I wasn't going to sit here and randomly pick on camera. That's ridiculous. It's already ridiculous enough. So this is a study about muscle regeneration. So first point. Muscle injuries are common in the active population and they cause the majority of players to leave in the sport world. I think the most common person that I can think of in terms of he didn't leave the sport, but someone who would have definitely been one of the greatest of all time had he not injured himself that badly is Derrick Rose. Like, if you remember Prime D Rose, I believe he's the youngest MVP in NBA history. He was rookie of the year, I believe. Like. Prime D. Rose was even like going back and watching before D. Rose got injured. Like he was literally that guy. Like if you go through like you are on social media and it'll be like who would have had the greatest career had they not gotten injured? Prime D. Rose is the answer. I think I'm pretty sure Derrick Rose just retired from the NBA. Um, I got to fact check that. I'm pretty sure I saw something saying that he retired because after his injury he he came back but um he he just wasn't the same like he just didn't have the same explosiveness he couldn't really do everything that he could he was able to do like if you really want an example think about John ja Morant for like times 10 like he can't do he couldn't do any of that anymore so it just wasn't the same so he bounced from like I think he played for the Knicks the Timberwolves and like other teams like that before he just finally retired because he just was never the same player um but it just honestly if John Morant doesn't get down his landing mechanics because how you see how he lands when he dunks then um knock on wood that that possibility could definitely be him as well because a lot of the injuries are also caused by bad landing mechanics or bad throwing mechanics that they never fix throughout their career and eventually it will cause an injury. So that's the first thing to think about when you think about muscle regeneration. Um, so there was a study that proved scientifically a more effective recovery from muscle injury uh, through exposure to low oxygen availability in a hyperbaric chamber that simulates high altitude geographic locations. So when you think of maybe I can't really think of any players who go in that chamber, but I can think of players who definitely do things like where they shorten their oxygen level. Like, for example, I was watching the training video with Steph Curry, and I believe he was like running on the treadmill and then he had that mask on. That mask kind of limits the flow of oxygen. The thought is that it will basically, basically, so if you ever hear NBA players say playing in Denver is different because of the altitude, it will basically the idea is that it will help players adjust to different altitudes or adjust to different situations where maybe the oxygen level isn't as good so when you're playing in this fourth quarter and you've been playing basically the whole game and you're tired that like lack of oxygen because you're so tired won't really necessarily affect you as much there's no real studies proving that that helps or that works but i've seen a lot of athletes and players do it and i've seen people like lebron do it and LeBron in like playoffs is not uncommon to play full games so I think that's more his his conditioning 
um, and his longevity and how he treats his body more than him doing stuff like that. But that might be part of it. So whether or not it works, it all varies and depends on that kind of who you are, and like whether or not you believe it. So um, last point, like I said, short and sweet. Uh, the new approach is important for the recovery of athletes, but also to mitigate the socioeconomic impact of the loss of work productivity caused by these injuries on the active population. So I was talking to somebody to close this out. I was talking to someone. I was like, when you think about the powerlifting, the three powerlifting, um, you know, lifts, you have bench, um, back squat, and you have deadlift. I said to someone, I was like, the squat and the deadlift, you could pick a construction worker from off the street and have him squat and deadlift, and he'd, he'd probably have a, a pretty um, heavy amount, like a lot. Um, now the mechanics in the terms of like how well his form is, it would probably be small errors that only people who really powerlift or have really powerlifted for long periods of time would know. But in terms of him or her lifting that large amount of weight in terms because of what they do in their everyday life, in terms of picking stuff up, and um, you know, squatting down to get stuff, that uh, application to every li everyday life is important. But when it comes to other people who aren't used to those movements or have bad mechanics from those movements, like if I was to go, um, if I was a manager at a store and a new employee came and I was like, can you pick this up? Rebecca, can you pick this up? Um, nine times out of ten they wouldn't have good lifting mechanics because they had never really lifted anything like that so they might hunch over when they pick something up and end up hurting their back or something like that because they have the, they lack those actual mechanics and because those mechanics aren't really taught or are shown a lot of people end up getting injured doing like day-to-day -day like working activities like that so um basically what they're saying is those chambers not only will help athletes in terms of recovering from injuries will also make it so we don't lose as many type as many people due to working type injuries from doing things with bad mechanics so the idea is to basically and also like in an economic standpoint the more workers you have the higher productivity you have so that's basically the whole idea so like less yeah like less um workers less productivity more workers more productivity so uh, like a lot of things in the athletic world or in the active world, and this is just a small example, kind of play to your day-to-day -day life, which is why it's important to stay active because it's not necessarily just about like lifting heavy weights. It's about having the ability to do your everyday activities without overly wearing yourself out. That's kind of the main point in my head of health and fitness anyway. All right, so that's the video for today, y'all. I just want to add this one last point. Sorry, guys, forgot to say in the last clip. The reason I didn't include bench with that is because if you bench, it takes, there's a lot more mechanics that kind of go into a benching to where if you don't have the correct mechanics, you just won't, you won't be able to bench a lot at all whatsoever. Because a lot of people who they don't, they don't understand the point of basically the arching your back, um, how to lift from basically in a straight line instead of doing that kind of curve that some people do when they bench. So there's a lot more that kind of goes into benching, which is why I don't really include that. It's it's, it's not really, um, also why I don't bench a lot unless I'm just trying to see how heavy I can bench because there's no real large amount of, of mechanics that I can go to. It's just to me, it's a good power-based movement. It's not even the best movement in my idea to grow the chest. And to grow the chest, the chest, like the flat bench in my head is not even top five in terms of growing your chest. If you really want to grow your chest, do incline. There have been studies that show incline will act will hit the um, upper chest, lower chest. Like so, it'll hit the upper chest the most compared to flat and decline, and it will hit it the same amount compared to um, flat and 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 decline. So incline to me is just the best of every world if you really want to grow your chest. If you're looking to grow your chest. So yeah, that's the video for today, y'all. Short and sweet get straight to the point, explain what the, the study means and how it may apply to your everyday life, which it should because I bet if you've worked in anything that involves you having to move or pick stuff up or stand for long periods of time, you've injured yourself on the job. So uh, yeah, that's the video for today, y'all. Thank y'all for uh, tuning in and I will see y'all. Oh, like, comment, and subscribe. Whew, almost forgot. And I will see y'all next week.